Hello everyone, welcome again to Hybrid Accounts. If you haven't subscribed, I advise you to do that uh, so that you can receive regular updates. So you're just going to take the presentation of the statement of financial position, contract asset again, all right? So uh, right now I'll just go directly to that question of ours. It was the same same question that on 1st January 2021, Najib entered into a contract with a customer to construct a stadium for a consideration of $100 million. This is the contract price. The contract was expected to take two years to complete. At the 1st December 2021, Najib had incurred cost of $24 million. These are costs incurred. Cost to complete are estimated at $20 million, other costs. And in addition to these costs, Najib purchased plan to be used on the contract at a cost of $16 million. You can encounter questions like this one. You are given extra costs, so that's why. And then we're told this plant was purchased on 1st January 2021 and will have no residual value at the end of two year contract. This question is you, it's good because the bit it's a bit comp complicated because it has also included another cost of the plant, right? The precision on the plant is to be allocated on a straight line basis across the contract. For those who started that this same question using a different method uh, will not be familiar with the figures. Progress of the contract, Naji measures the progress on contract using all right, based on the percentage of the cost to date compared to the total estimated contract cost. Now it's different to that principle, that original principle. Now we are measuring the progress of the contract based on the input method, based on the cost to date, not based on the work certified. This is the difference we're just going to try and take a look here. So we are told that the first December 2021, the value of the work certified was $45 million and the customer had paid 11.4. Now we won't need this $45 million. This is none of our business right now because we are measuring the progress using a different method. Required. How should this transaction be accounted for in the year ended 31st December 20X1? So we have just changed the method. Instead of using the output method, now we are using the input method. But the same, same question. So if you haven't gone through the previous, I advise you to go there so that All right, let's go to the solution. So as usual, we are using the input method and the first step is to determine the overall profit or loss, which will be the same. Contract price with $100 million, and then you list total expected cost to be incurred. From the question, we are given cost incurred to date is 24, not 24 plus eight. We are given is 24 only. And then we are also given the cost of completion is 20. Do not worry about these other figures. We just look at them, right? And I'll tell you how we arrived at those two, at those remaining figures. So don't worry about that. Here they are. Cost in car to date were 24 million. Cost to completion were 20 million. But we are told Nanchi purchased the plan in addition. That means this cost of the plan has not been incorporated into the cost in car and estimated costs to be incurred in the future. So what you have to do when you encounter an uncurrent asset like this one, you have to depreciate it. The accumulated depreciation goes to cost incurred and the remaining carrying amount after the, and the remaining balance goes to what? The remaining balance would, would, would actually have to go to the cost uh, estimated. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, here we are. I just took the cost of the plant to determine the cost incurred is accumulated depreciation. So I just take cost minus cost value zero over two, right? All right, my friend, my friend, if you are at the place where there is noise, do not unmute. So I will have 8 million and this 8 million stays here. As for the costs actually uh, to be incurred, actually, these will be the, the cost remaining on the plant. And since here the residual value is zero, I could just say uh, cost minus accumulated depreciation, which is uh, actually 8 million. So that 8 million is here. And so you add then you have 32 here and 20 plus 8, I have 28. The sum of total cost would be 60. 100 minus 60 would be 40. Now be very careful here. By using the output method, actually I wouldn't, here, to, to determine the progress of the contract, I'm going to take the ratio of this cost. Cost in car, that is at the two over total cost, that is 60. As for the previous method, there was no need to break down this cost of the plant because I was not going to use this ratio of the cost. But here, it's very, very important. That's why I decided to initiate it there. All right, let's go to step two. 
step two is on the contract progress and we are using the ratio of costs. So cost incurred over total cost expected. Cost incurred was 32 and total cost was 60. So if you multiply by 100, you have 53.2%. Then after that, you go to step three, that is the statement of profit or loss. And now I'm repeating again this for the, for the other time. I'm repeating again. For this new IFRA 15, just waste your time to determine the revenue recognized by using the percentage. But for the cost, for the cost of sales, you do not need to, you do not need to use the percentage. Just take the difference between the cost and card, right? I'm repeating again. For this new IFRA 15, to obtain revenue, no problem, use the percentage as usual. We have completed 53.3%. You, you just check at the beginning of the year, there was nothing. So 53.3 minus zero, and you multiply by the contract price, you have 53.3. As for the cost of sales, you do not need to use this percent. Actually, I hope you get me. I just used 53.3% minus zero, but I'm repeating again, no need. Let me write this. No need to use this one. I'm saying no need to use percentage done cost of sales. No need. It's the total wastage of time. And actually, for the other method, you could actually be wrong. So I advise you not to use. Actually, do not use it. Let me repeat this. Actually, do not use it. So I could have just said that cost of sales, cost of sales was just easy. I could just say, oh, cost of sales, what is it? I would just take costing card to date. What was the costing card? What was the costing card? Yeah, I'll just say cost card to date. Costing card to date. And then I would less, I would less cost to date at the beginning of the year is what I, I would have done. And this would be equal to cost incurred to date from our computation was 32 million. Cost at the beginning was zero. So 32 minus zero, 32 minus zero uh, remains 32 million. So this is how we arrived at this figure. So ignore this percentage. I advise you, I've written this uh, so that you see that you do not need it right now, whether you use the input method or output method. Use the percent only for revenue. I'm repeating here, use the percentage only for revenue, not for cost of sales. So I hope everything is fine there. I hope everything is fine. All right, we can just complete this now. Uh, if you just take a data the two, where, where did this data two come? I hope you, you remember where the data two came came from. Uh, if you just check here, you just find that the two of you ones. Where did this data two figure come from? This data two figure, where did it come from? Just take a look uh, and you'll find it. We just did, you just computed the costing card actually. It was the two here, but also from the question itself, it was seen there at the two, right? So you just got the statement of financial position and you complete everything. Let us first determine the contract asset or liability. Now, you see this, what has been done. I'm, I'm, if this, you, you should never do this now. Do not do this. Previously, we're using cost to date, then plus profit to date, and then less amount. But do not use this. Let me write this. Let me show you now. Let me write it down here. Do not, do not use that. Not use cost to date plus profit. I hope you get me. Do not use that. But I'm specifying use revenue to date. So instead of saying cost to date plus profit, do not use that. I hope you are getting me. Do not use that. So this is not right. You should not use this way. But most of time, if you use the input method, you would get the same value, but that's not what you should do. You have to avoid that at all costs, I advise you. So what are you going to do? 
just determine the revenue to date. Revenue to date. What is the revenue to date now? Revenue to date is easy. You have the revenue there, 53. We have completed 53.3%. So I would just say that 53.3% and I would multiply by the contract price that is 100 million. And this would give me actually 53.3 million. Now you see, this 53.3 million equals 32 plus 21.3. For this case, they are equal, but it's not always the case. Most of the time, when you use the output method, they will be different. So I advise you to use this one. So this one should be used and you should ignore this one totally. So after having cost the revenue to date, and then you can list the amount, amount billed or amount invoiced. Amount invoiced, invoiced. That is 11.4. So I could just list 11.4 million there, right? 11.4, and actually you would end up having your figure, the figure that you wish for. 53.3 minus 11.4. How much are we getting here? It's positive, so it's a contract asset. If it was negative, it would be it was going to be a contract liability. So 53.3 minus 11.4, how much is 32 at 1.9, something like that? I would have that 1.9 million. So this is how we are just going to obtain the contract asset. So uh, when you when you decided to go to this, let's say you're preparing the statement of financial position. I would say under non-current assets, I would have a plant with a carrying amount of how much? You know, we had a plant of 16 million dollars which we depreciated by 8 million. So plant was $8 million, right? $8 million. And then I would have the contract asset. Contract asset valued at how much? At, at $1.8 million. The one point, actually 0 0.9, 0 0.9 million dollars. So this is what will have been the case. So I hope everything is fine here. So you should actually be very careful when you deal with things of this nature. So uh, just to make matters more clear, let me repeat again so that you have to know, do not use this one, do not, do not use this one, never. Do not use this one, just take revenue to date. Just take revenue to date, revenue to date, that you have seen a 53.3 and then less amount billed or amount invoiced to the customer. So this is what, you should have you should have done right amount bill after doing this uh you will be very very fine uh, everything will be over so i just advise you to do that again if you haven't subscribed you can just do that for regular updates i love you all guys